What does it feel like to have lived for tens of thousands of years? For him, this question doesn't matter since his life is about to end. In a beautiful virtual world, Peng Zhu walks around with a girl named Baba. In front of him are two rats, making the river dark and dirty. Baba comments why anyone would wash charcoal in the river and can it even be washed clean. This time, the brat asks how would they know if they don't try. Peng Zhu answers he has never seen anyone manage to wash the black off the charcoal despite living for 880 years and the brat's imaginations are really wild. The brat arrogantly says Peng Zhu is an old man who escaped the natural laws of life and death and that is more bizarre than washing charcoal. The other brat then asks Peng Zhu to come with them after admitting how long he has lived. Shocked, Peng Zhu asks where to. The brats shed off their disguise and reveal their evil nature. After the eruption of their powers, they tell Peng Zhu they will bring him to hell. Peng Zhu realizes his carelessness and prepares for battle. He asks the brats if they can kick him out and shows his powers, overwhelming his enemies. The brats can't withstand the impact of Peng Zhu's might, the powers of the divine beasts. The brats are pushed away as they receive the sudden burst of power. They can't believe how skilled Peng Zhu is and asks for help. Peng Zhu hears them and realizes they are asking for his wife's help. Suddenly, his wife betrays and blackmails him into destroying his real body. Peng Zhu realizes his wife is an enforcer and was in disbelief. The brats get their chance and strike Peng Zhu who was frozen in place. They showed their full might, knocking Peng Zhu away. This time, Peng Zhu is thoroughly defeated. In the real world, Sun Ran wakes up. Here, he is an underclass who only has faster reaction speed and exceptional looks. He has congenital heart disease and might die at any moment. He believes no one would know he is a big shot in the virtual world and that he is only a tragedy. There are more than 30 billion humans living in the entire Solar System Federation. To avoid unrest, the Federation developed virtual worlds to allow mankind to experience new lives and reduce dissatisfaction in the real world. Thus, 10 years ago, the first virtual world, Earth OL was born. Sun Ram entered the world at the first chance. With his superior game experience, he found the extremely rare divine artifact the Jade Butterfly of Creation. He successfully reverse-engineered the raw data of the divine artifact and obtained the highest level of administrative rights in Earth OL. The authority allowed Sun Ran to remove all restrictions on Earth OL and he became the great creator, a being who is above all rules of the game. Also known as the strongest cheat user, Sun Ran experienced a life that has spanned tens of thousands of years in the past as time flows at a different rate in the virtual world, and he has never been discovered by anyone. However, he never thought his identity as a hacker would be exposed today. Sun Ran started to think and his mind went to the past. He remembers his wedding night when he suffered a heart attack in reality and got disconnected, unable to wipe the traces of his connection information. Sun Ran then receives an email from the Virtual World's Administrative HQ. After opening the email, he saw the lists of crimes he committed and the corresponding punishments. For the first crime of destroying the balance of the game by living more than 800 years, Sun Ran is required to pay more than 900 million credit points. For the second crime against the opposite gender, having 49 wives illegally, Sun Ran is sued by only 46 of them and he is required to pay more than 8.6 million credits. The central AI determines he is incapable to pay and will be monitored all the time. Realizing there were wives who did not sue him, Sun Ran asks for their names. However, due to the confidentiality agreement, their identities cannot be revealed. Sun Ran puts down his virtual equipment. He sits in his chair and pondered how grave his situation is. Discovering the risk of pulling stunts in the virtual world has increased several times. The central AI is the core of all artificial intelligence systems on the planet and its controls are extremely powerful. Sun Ran is having a mental breakdown for the AI is forcing him to his death. In the past, Sun Ran could not even get the most ordinary jobs. He cannot take on the work because of his physical condition. In the end, he can only be a male escort. However, Sun Ran would rather die than do that kind of work. Right, he'll just end it all. Sun Ran arrives on top of a building with his face in despair. He's got no money to cure his disease and might die the very next second. Sun Ran would rather follow his heart and jump than live a life worse than death. Suddenly, a woman arrives and asks Sun Ran if he would jump. He was stunned after seeing someone asking him such a question. The woman berates him for being heartless and asks him why he would commit suicide despite promising her to grow old together. Sun Ran asks the woman who she is and if she had mistaken him for someone else. He could not believe such a beautiful girl would talk to him in the real world. Seeing the beauty, Sun Ran is reminded of someone. He asks the girl if she is his first wife in Earth OL. Sun Ran could not believe what is happening since players would seal off their existing memories and experience a new life. He believes that the woman is troublesome and must have taken the game seriously. The woman asks Sun Ran to go with him in the car. However, he continued to question her about where would they go. He knows that life in game is all in the past. The woman answers him that only fools would take it seriously and she was inviting him to the hospital. Sun Ran asks the woman, why, and she answers, for a heart transplant. 
He was speechless and blankly stared at the woman's beautiful face. Inside the car, Sunran asks why the woman is doing this and she answers it's a waste for a talent like him to go to waste. The woman explains that the credit points paid for the operation are just a loan and Sunran has to pay her back in the future. The woman continued to ask how much debt he owe and if it's really so bad that he would commit suicide to which Sunran answered it isn't much, only a little over 900 million. The car jolted after the woman suddenly presses the brake in shock. The woman comments that Sunran is really something and he'll be stuck with her for the time being. She then showed him a perfect job to earn money to pay off his debts. The woman introduced herself as Lan Sin, a member of the Enforcer Alliance, and a Dark Steel level enforcer. Sun Ran is surprised for knowing her identity. With the birth of virtual worlds, many organizations developing cheats have emerged. Meanwhile, those who use the cheats to destroy the game balance are the destroyers. To combat them, the enforcers were born. They were hired to use cheats and deal with the destroyers. Sun Ran asks Lan Xin if she wants him to be an enforcer and warns her that he is a monitored individual by the central AI. Lan Xin explains that enforcers are on the side of the law and the central AI won't interfere with his lawful actions. After hearing that she needs an assistant, Sun Ran smiles, knowing he would get a healthy heart and enjoy a new life again. Sun Ran declares he is the right guy and he'll be definitely worth it. There are three residential levels in the Earth Alliance. At the top is the zenith where nature flourishes and only 10 million people can live. The second level is the garden which contains a simulated, artificial landscape and is favored by the middle class. The lowest level is the common ground which only has turbid air, dull steel, and narrow streets. Located in common ground district 55 Lei Lan Zin's lodgings. Inside, Sun Ran is looking at Lan Zin's photo. He realized her photo is pasted on the picture of the zenith and it must be her dream to reach there like everyone else. Sun Ran turns his head when he heard a sudden movement. On the side, Lan Xin arrives and brings with her a regular sensorial chair. As she goes inside the room, she asks Sun Ran how is his heart. Sun Ran checks his chest and answers it feels fine due to how advanced technology is. Hearing he is alright, Lan Xin tells him that they will connect to headquarters. She explains he will be staying in the living room while Lan Xin stays in her room and she forbids him to come to her. After Lan Xin is gone, Sun Ran comments that they have already lived together for many years and there's no need to be shy. Thereafter, Sun Ran comfortably sits on his chair and picks up his virtual equipment. He initiated connection, completing the analysis and acquiring the permission. After completely logging in, Sun Ran is teleported in a wide grassy field. He is mesmerized to see the otherworldly structure in front of him. Lan Xin explains it is the Enforcer Alliance's headquarters, the Rubik's Cube of Order. She further says that there are more than 5 million permanent enforcers in the Alliance and they maintain the balance of each virtual world. Sun Ran thought the majority of the enforcers are doing their job for a bite eat and those at the top are not really skilled. Lan Xin introduces her team as Rose of Thorns with three members and Sun Ran will be the fourth. While they walk, Sun Ran asks why does Lan Xin still need him. Lan Xin says she needs someone really good and she welcome an experienced and skilled player like Sun Ran. Sun Ran smiles and proclaims she has recruited the right guy. Unfortunately, Lan Xin doesn't like being called intimately and berated Sun Ran for his shamelessness. As they arrived, Lan Xin warns Sun Ran not to hit on her besties and she would not allow him laying his hands on them. Sun Ran opens the door and takes a peek. He was surprised when he discovers he know the people inside the room. The girls warmly greet him and they're happy that he finally arrived. Lan Xin calmly introduced them to Sun Ran. One of them is Care, codenamed Purple Rose. She is Sun Ran's 49th wife in Earth OL. The other one is Bai Tingxuan, codenamed White Rose. She is Sun Ran's 48th wife in Earth OL. Subsequently, Lan Xin introduces herself as Red Rose. She is Sun Ran's first wife in Earth OL. They are Iron Level Enforcers. This time, Sun Ran finally realizes they are the three wives who didn't press charges against him. Sun Ran politely greeted his teammates. He begins to joke with them and reminisce about what happened in the bedroom. The girls became shy so Lan Xin orders everyone to get down to business. She explains that Sun Ran is now a trainee enforcer and must accumulate qualifications so he can join everyone on missions after he is promoted to Iron Level. Lan Xin tells him to proceed to small, freshly created virtual worlds and complete commissions. She gave Sun Ran a prepared commission from Sheer Virtual Company, and their virtual world is called Dragon Age. Lan Xin reveals that the game is plagued with minor troubles where vampires, werewolves, and evil spirits are popping up everywhere. She says a destroyer has gained control of the world's strongest creature, the giant divine dragon and the company suspects it is a work of a rival company. Sun Ran comments he is interested and asks if Lan Xin wants him to be a dragon slayer. However, Lan Xin denied it and says someone is already hired to kill it and Sun Ran is only there to assist and obtain the qualification of an enforcer. Sun Ran questions how long will it take and Lan Xin answers that as long as the dragon is slain. He is also rewarded 500 credit points which is considered cheap but acceptable for iron level teams such as Rose of Thorns. Even though Sun Ran can't use cheats like before, something as simple as protecting someone is no challenge at all. After reading the contract, Sun Ran intimately asks Lan Xin to send the papers. While she pouts in dissatisfaction, Lan Xin is 
is shocked after reading the display. 95% of the commission will be credited to Rose of Thorns while remaining 5% will be used to compensate Earth OL's service provider. Sun Ran is surprised upon seeing Lanzin's face. However, he could only let Lanzin take all the earning and he will rely on her for support. Lanzin is speechless after hearing Sun Ran's shamelessness. She accepted his proposal and hold on to the earnings. Seeing her sign the contract, Sun Ran says she can do whatever she wish and as her husband, he will take care of her from now on. Plans in is stunned, seeing his smug face, watching her spacing off. Care questions why and states they are still discussing the commission. Plans in immediately asks forgiveness and reasons she was just thinking about something. Seeing it settled, Sun Ran stands up and declares he will be a bodyguard in Dragon Age. Plans in bids farewell and tells him to be careful. In the room, only the three wives remain. Care says Sun Ran is an unfathomable man and it is too risky to work with him. Lanzin turns to Bai Tingxuan, knowing she's best at reading people. Bai Tingxuan says it will be fine and proclaims Sun Ran is someone worthy of trust. Lanzin then checks Peng Zhu's records and reveals that he had a pretty high status and would always marry his partners and treat them wholeheartedly. Care comments Sun Ran was very good to her and would accommodate her every way. Bai Tingxuan then says Sun Ran is not a bad guy but she's not interested but she might have feelings for him in the future. Kier whispers she believes Bai Tingxuan and she is sure Lanzin is interested in Sun Ran. Lanzin blushes, saying there is nothing good about about Sun Ran and to forget about him. Seeing Lan Sin's flustered face, the girls laugh heartily. In District 55, inside Lan Sin's room, Sun Ran breaks through the door. He entered Lan Sin's room and saw her inside the sensorial chair. Sun Ran happened to take a quick look and noticed her credit limit is only 32. He realized she used up all her savings to save him and wonders if she is not afraid he would run away. Sun Ran declares he would not forget what she had done for him. He exits the room and prepares his equipment. Resolved, he will put in some effort to make money and grant Lan Zin's wish to enter the scene. Sun Ran sits on his sensorial chair. He smiles and proclaims he is coming to Dragon Age. After connecting to the game, Sun Ran wakes up. He is transported in an unknown white space. Sun Ran suspected his connection is interrupted by someone who is likely skilled. Suddenly, a man greets Sun Ran. He says he is glad they had meet. Sun Ran is amazed the other party knows his name, realizing it's too late to disconnect. He asks the man for his name. The man introduced himself as the Earth's central AI and he must monitor Sun Ran as he is a dangerous individual. Sun Ran then learned that if not for the AI, his agreement with Lan Zin would have never passed. Relieved it is not an enemy, Sun Ran questioned why he was brought in the white space. The man politely gestured Sun Ran to take his seat, getting straight to the point. The man looks at Sun Ran, saying he is a peerless genius at the game. However, his tackings about cheats have created several conceited disciples who think themselves as saints. The man further explains that this allowed the disciples to ignore the game's rules and live in perpetuity, resulting in conflicts amongst them. Sun Ran broke into sweat, knowing how grave the situation is. The man continues, stating that the trouble is like a powder keg capable of destroying Earth OL at any moment and might cause turbulence in the real world. This time, the man points at Sun Ran, saying he is the origin of all the problems. Seeing this, Sun Ran asks what should he do. The man gave Sun Ran two options. If you refuse to cooperate, he will be deemed as a terrorist and the ultra-military satellite weapon that is in space. The finger of God will be activated. It will obliterate Lan Zin and Sun Ran's physical bodies in the real world. Sun Ran was staggered upon hearing the consequences. The man smiles, saying the second option, where San Run needed to help in getting rid of the saints and ensure that Earth OL can operate state. If the saints die, the entirety of debt will be written off and Lan Zin and Sun Ran will have a place in the zenith to live comfortably. Hearing everything, Sun Ran muttered he doesn't have a choice. He seriously said he doesn't have the highest level of administrative rights and he can't use cheats with the restrictions in place. Knowing his disciples are very cunning, Sun Ran decides to let himself get promoted to gold level enforcer and enter Earth OL to avoid alarming them. Finally, he asked the central AI to cooperate with him in which the AI gladly accepts. The central AI informed that it will tamper with the purchase records and legalize cheat engines that Sun Ran can use. To avoid any unwanted situations, the flow of time in Earth OL was slowed down and the central AI gave Sun Ran a year to prepare, equivalent to 100 years in Earth OL. Sun Ran acknowledged the situation, knowing that if you want to become a gold level enforcer, he must complete his Dragon Age mission and obtain qualification first. A while later, Sun Ran's legal status is confirmed and a portal for Dragon Age has emerged. Before entering, Sun Ran is reminded of the virtual laws and discovered he could only use cheats that are level 1 and below. With excitement, Sun Ran entered the portal. He is teleported in the middle of a forest. Sun Ran was suffering injuries and grunted in pain. 
he had possessed the body of a player whose game time is coming to an end. Finding the enforcers must have operated this way. While he was in a daze, a huge beast suddenly appears. Right off the bat, he encountered a life-threatening situation. Sun Ran guessed the Shira Virtual Company wants to see if he can use his weapons to defeat the beast as a test of his abilities, and if he failed, he would be kicked out right away. In the Dragon Age's supervision headquarters, the assessment has begun. While many have failed in the assessment, Dragon Age's chief inspector, Chen Encheng, calmly looks at the proceedings and knows it's not easy to become an enforcer. In the forest, the weather is extremely good. Sun Ran threw away his bow, recalling that mages exist legally in this world. Knowing that is the case, Sun Ran started experimenting. In the headquarters, Chen and Cheng saw Sun Ran and thought he was playing dead and must be a useless piece of meat. It was then he realized he was wrong. Sun Ran was finished, calmly proclaiming he will make do with the generic cheat he just created. The beast was ready and pounced against him with incredible speed while Sun Ran stayed unafraid, standing still like a statue. As the beast arrived in front of him, Sun Ran remained unmoved. In the headquarters, the woman asks Chen and Cheng if the kid has been scared silly, but he only asked her to be quiet. His gaze was on the display, analyzing if Sun Ran is an idiot or a pro. Sun Ran evaded the beast while the rune he laid was activated. The beast eyes widened in surprise. The level 1 magic frost rune bloomed and threw the beast up in the air. The fight continues and Sun Ran activated level 0 magic, ice sting. However, the low level skill is easily dodged and the angered beast attacked again relentlessly. Sun Ran ran as he was chased by the monstrous tiger, thinking it was stupid. While Sun Ran was in palm's reach, the beast fell into his trap. A magic circle was activated while the beast was inside it, incapable to move. In just a blink, the beast was frozen while Sun Ran covered himself from the monstrous roar. The people inside the headquarters were shocked after seeing Sun Ran's display of moves. Chen and Cheng asked his assistant to look Sun Ran up, for he is skilled and had adequate understanding of the cheats. The assistant readily agreed. In the white space, the central AI was staring on his display. It shows Sun Ran's information, modified by the central AI. Back in the Dragon Age headquarters, the information of Sun Ran is displayed, having a clean record and a skilled magic user. Thereafter, Chen and Cheng discovered there are only Sun Ran and two others out of the original 400 people. This time, Chen and Cheng declared the assessment is complete and the three heroes will be listed as guards. Back to Sun Ran, he received a notification, informing him of clearing the assessment. He is also informed there were two other who passed. The first one is Rem who is a warrior from the Warrior Guild. The other one is Jasmine who is an illusionist from the Mage Guild. Sun Ran then switched off the display. Now, the official commission will begin. Sun Ran stood atop cliff, overlooking the sea. Beyond the sea is the territory of his upcoming enemy, a dragon, controlled by a destroyer, deemed as an invincible entity by the players of Dragon Age. Dragon Age is a small world with three dragons for the players to slay and obtain glory. Sun Ran's mission is to head for Cloud City and assist Baron Charlie, a bronze-level enforcer to get rid of the destroyers controlling the dragons. Realizing the communication is intercepted, Sun Ran immediately interrupted the connection. Knowing the Shure Company is way too green, Sun Ran decides to warn them for their unsafe operations. Meanwhile, the people in the headquarters are startled, seeing Sun Ran's strange actions. After their connection is rejected, Chen and Cheng decides to check Sun Ran's situation. In the forest, Chen and Cheng saw words, informing the headquarters about the danger the enforcers were in. His face turned grim. Chen and Cheng commanded to focus on monitoring the Cloud City. At the same time, Cloud City is in a sea of fire, raging like an inferno and above it is a dragon, spewing disaster everywhere. Cloud City is under attack. The people were helpless as they watched their friends get fried by scorching heat. Back at the headquarters, everyone is in a panic, searching for Charlie, who is supposed to battle against the destroyers. This time, they receive a message, recommending a passive observation to avoid exposing them. Chen and Cheng gritted his teeth in anger, knowing he had been careless. With resolute voice, he commanded to prepare the divine punishment and they would blast the dragon apart. As they prepared, a bit of time is needed and it's recommended for an enforcer to cooperate to increase the chances of dealing a fatal blow. Right then, they found Charlie's whereabouts. In the Cloud City, the dragon continues on its rampage. They could see Charlie, hiding behind a wall in the building nearby, waiting for the right moment to attack. Seeing this, Chen and Cheng is distressed, knowing Charlie only had the strength of his body in real life. The dragon continued to rain down fires everywhere. A squad fights back, launching arrows as a counterattack. However, the dragon's defenses were outstanding. In retaliation, the dragon burned the archers into a crisp. Charlie saw this and knew their effort was useless. The divine punishment is not ready, but enforcers can't remain cowards. Charlie has to take down the enemy. The dragon flew towards the building where Charlie is hiding. This time, Charlie came out of his hiding place. However, all he saw was an empty sky. Suddenly, a dragon roar was heard and the building crumbled on its weight as Charlie struggled under the falling debris. The dragon towered everything. It breathed fire and satisfaction after the chaos it had spread. 
amidst the destruction. A hand grabbed at the edge of the tower. Charlie is dangling on the tower. Below is a sea of fire. He got nowhere to go but up. He gritted his teeth in anger. Unfortunately, the tower finally gave up. It crumbled as the dragon flew away. As Charlie fell, he realized the dragon had not discovered him yet. With his courage, Charlie brought his feet up. He charged towards the dragon, holding his sword for a sneak attack. The dragon was clueless, not until Charlie appeared within its reach. However, it was too late and Charlie had already swung his sword. The dragon was beheaded as the sword flashed on its neck. Charlie stepped on the dragon as it fell. He returned to what was left of the ruined tower. One by one, the people emerged from their hiding spots. They pointed at Charlie as they saw the head of the vanquished beast. On top, Charlie stood valiantly as the people cheered on his heroic deed. His effort paid off. Back in the headquarters, Chen and Cheng cheered after the victory. The divine punishment will be on standby for the remaining two dragons. They discussed the casualties and the availability of resurrection. More than a hundred players' as losses would be bearable and Chen and Cheng would compensate them with game time. As he was making a decision, a report about the three trainee enforcers came. The warrior was stabbed to death. The illusionist has escaped with her illusion arts. This time, the assistant was shocked as she saw Sun Ran being ambushed. Somewhere, the Skull Army was summoned. Standing heroically, Sun Ran alone faced the army. The necromancer arrogantly asked him if he would commit suicide or accept a ride to hell. However, Sun Ran smiled confidently, casting spells to prepare for a fight. The necromancer roared in laughter after seeing Sun Ran's low-level spells. He had level 2 staff to enhance his strength. How would Sun Ran fight him? His army alone would tear Sun Ran to pieces. However, Sun Ran was unafraid. He launched his spells as the army attacked him in a frenzy. A skeleton sneaked an attack which Sun Ran noticed as if he had eyes on the back of his head. Sun Ran jumped and left a rune in his position. The spell activated, freezing some of the skeletons. While in the air, Sun Ran conjured more spells. A freezing tornado appeared and a rain of ice fell from the sky. Sun Ran stepped on the crystal of ice. Below him laid his defeated enemies and the shocked army of skeletons. His skeletons were brittle but it would be difficult to fight an army. However, Sun Ran could continuously cast ice sting and did not look a bit tired. Unfortunately, puny ants won't be able to struggle for long as the necromancer finally summoned his champion. A huge hand appeared from the deep pit. A giant stood tall as an aura of death surged from it. Sun Ran knew it was a level 2 giant. The grounds trembled after the giant started running towards Sun Ran. Its skin is tough, Sun Ran's magic could not deal a bit of damage. With one swing, the crystal of ice was reduced to pieces. Sun Ran jumped and dashed backwards. He was encircled by an army of skeletons. Sun Ran continued his attacks, leaving runes for traps while he ran away. Rune trap after rune trap, Sun Ran fought calmly. Faced with the giant again, Sun Ran prepared another trap. As the giant approached, prepared to swing its bat, Sun Ran's spell activated. The giant's foot was frozen in place. Back in the headquarters, Chen and Cheng could not believe Sun Ran's moves. He wanted to see how far could Sun Ran fight with his low-level spells. Back to the fight. The necromancer laughed at how futile Sun Ran's struggles were. However, Sun Ran calmly smiled and dashed towards the necromancer. This time, the necromancer began to run as he realized Sun Ran only wanted to hold the giant to kill him first. Sun Ran fired a barrage of ice stings toward the necromancer. However, his attack was blocked. The necromancer sacrificed his summons to save himself. Sun Ran's attack continued while the necromancer crawled and hid behind a huge rock. The necromancer wondered if Sun Ran was casting ice stings or a sniper rifle. However, he was confident in the remnants of his army and the giant. Speaking of the giant, it finally broke through the ice trap. With a roar, it dashed towards Sun Ran who was casting ice sting continuously. In the headquarters, Chen and Cheng commanded his assistant to give Sun Ran a hand. In the battlefield, Sun Ran continued casting spells after spells. Chen and Cheng was startled, seeing Sun Ran cast spells with 0.1 seconds of each other as if he was dual casting. Sun Ran had exceeded the limits of his level. He started casting another spell with all his might. The giant swung its bat as Sun Ran slammed the ground and a magic circle bloomed in its place. The giant was inside the circle. It brought down its bat, going for Sun Ran's head. His eyes showed determination. Sun Ran believed he would not die today. A huge ice crystal bloomed. It shone brightly amidst the chaos. Behind the rock, the necromancer observed his silence spread through the air. He turned to look. A wide smile appeared on his face. His enemy must have suffered from the giant's blow. Suddenly, he was beheaded and his head fell while his face was still in shock. Sun Ran smiles. He did not believe his enemy would fall for his trick. This time, Sun Ran happily claims victory. The necromancer laid on the ground. His summons, the skeletons and the giant, began to fade away. In the headquarters, everyone celebrated Sun Ran's victory. Chen and Cheng is amazed by Sun Ran, the living embodiment of an ice man. So, anyway that's all for today. If you enjoy this video please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also comment for next episode if you wanted to watch. Well, thanks for watching.